very good acoustic. Um, so I got to say, it's the, the first time for me that I do a, a presentation in this way, so uh, I'm a little bit nervous, so be nice to me, or otherwise I got to, uh, uh, to cry and run away. <laughs> so let's start. Um, before I go to the topic and to explain what nothing about devils mean, I just do a quick introduction. Uh, who am I? First about me, I, my name is uh, Søren Schlegel. I studied computer science in Karlsruhe. I finished my, uh, in uh, 2011. My experience since that time, I'm an ABAP developer since 2011. Um, mostly I'm focused as a developer for sub ERP and uh, sub SCM or sub ARPO for the older generation. And I'm um, also working as a consultant for solution manager, change request management. I'm also interested in all the development topics and also the um, development methodologies and the new techniques and technologies and everything around. And I'm also, since uh, 2013, a trainer for sub education, so doing some uh, BC 400, BC 401, TAW 10, TAW 12, uh, HA 400, and all the ABAP development courses and uh, HANA development courses. Um, about my company, you see also uh, uh, on the right, upper right corner, I'm working for Concilio. It's a consulting company based in Aschheim, near Munich, Waldorf, Ratingen, and uh, also we have a small office in Sofia. And the company is um, focused on production processes in SCM and ERP context. And also we have some um, S4HANA implementation projects and also some experience in these topics. And out of the company, um, I have also the possibility with different customers to, to work on newer releases. So we have some people here from customer side who are still living on an ERP 6 null with enhancement package zero to something else. <laughs> also some older customers, non-ERP, still 4.7. Okay. <laughs> so my role in the company is I'm a managing consultant and also um, 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 responsible for innovation topics and also HANA development and ABAP development, all the stuff you need. <laughs> so, what's it about? It's nothing about devils, <laughs> as the, the title says. Um, I'll talk today about a very religious topic. Somebody, uh, everybody heard of it, somebody loves it, a lot of people hate it, <laughs> because it's a very um, common buzzword you're here today. So the buzzword like digitalization and like blockchain, for example, you, every time you hear it, but what's behind it? So I go a step further. I'll uh, talk about demons and interesting other things. So perhaps somebody of you knows what's it about. <laughs> so. What's the problem if you start in this uh, topic? Um, you hear a lot of passwords and you have a lot of solutions in this uh, area. You, for example, you heard about Sub Leonardo IoT, you heard about Sub Edge services, the, as far as I understood, the more newer version. There are also products from other customers, like uh, other companies like um, Mindsphere from uh, Siemens. Then we have also a Bosch IoT suit. Then we have, for example, also Node-RED, which also can be integrated in IoT solutions. Then we have some other products in this area from Google, from Microsoft, from Amazon, Oracle, and a lot of companies. And if it's not enough buzzwords uh, for you, then we have still some more. For example, on this page, you find a lot more companies who are um, working or doing some stuff in this area. We have some, a lot of solutions about uh, platforms. We have some protocols. We have, we have some uh, ready-to-run products. We also saw uh, already uh, Alexa today. And that's all our different IoT solutions. 
So very nice, but the problem for a double looper is how to get in touch, really in touch with the solutions. So you know there's a, a th uh, thousands of uh, solutions uh, about this topic, and um, as a developer you want just simply want to try it out, to do some hands-on, and do some development in this, uh, in this field. No, that's what's the feel. So, Um, yeah, my idea as a developer is I want really to get in, in touch with it and get uh, uh, some uh, experience with this whole IoT thing. So let's don't focus on any products, the devils uh, in this topic because um, uh, it's very hard to estimate which solution to use or uh, how to get in and for example if you're on innovative uh, programmer in your company and you want to start this project, or just want to do some uh, IoT stuff, then you for first have to estimate which solution, how much does it cost, and it's expensive. And it took a long time till you get uh, a fast prototype to show to your uh, customers or to your company. So let's start from the very basics. We have our system, for example, an SAP system or uh, something else and we have a device and these two needs to um, communicate with each other so how do you want to make this with which technology the solution um, also many um, uh, products use is the MQTT protocol the message queuing telemetry transport protocol uh, it's an uh, ISO standard and the very good stuff, it is a, a small code footprint. So if you have some small devices, and also not the, the biggest bandwidth, they are, when they are, if they are something on the road or in the, in the factory, they just need to uh, set, uh, send some small information to, the, uh, to your central system. So how does it work with MQTT? An MQTT always has a broker in the middle a so-called MQTT broker, and we have only clients. We don't have a server. We have a lot of clients communicating with the broker via a publish and subscribe scenario. How does it work? We have our broker in the middle, and several clients connecting to this broker on a given topic. For example, I, a client A subscribed to the topic temperature roof, and the client B publishes some information to the uh, broker um, with, for example, the uh, actual temperature for this topic. Um, and it's also the, the whole stuff. So, and the question is, if we have some broker and clients and uh, communication between them, uh, how can we handle this on the app side? So SAP developed uh, an interface class, the uh, IFMQTT classes. They are available with S4HANA 1809. So if you're on older release, it's a little bit sad. Just can't do it on your own. But uh, looking at the timetable, we have about, um, yeah, a lot of companies should already be on the release, but also the companies who are switching to S4HANA in the next months or years will have the possibility to use this technology. So the problem normally works like um, we first need to connect to our uh, MQTT uh, broker via WebSocket communication. Um, it's a, in this case, it's a special implementation of the um, APC and a, uh, AMC, other messaging channels and other push channels for a WebSocket communication. And with the straightforward plan, so we connect to our broker, then we have, uh, for example, an unconnect uh, method that we can implement to do some 
uh, logging or uh, so on. And then we can publish into a, a topic or we can subscribe on a topic. And in the moment I subscribe on a topic, I get any information uh, in the um, on, on message method uh, if any, uh, any other device or client pulls some information on it. In the coding, it looks like not much coding. It's very easy to achieve to do some rapid prototyping. So first, uh, there's some coding from uh, ABAP development tools where it, uh, we implemented our um, class run main. Everybody knows this. What is ABAP? <laughs> <laughs> the only good programming language. <laughs> um, so very simple. We have to create an instance of our uh, MQTT class who handles all the, the logic behind. And then we say we um, publish a message to the class. A message to the, we publish a message to the uh, to the given topic, and then we can also subscribe to the topic. And then, if we publish again a message, then we get a response, which should look like this, or in a final system. So, so this is our coding where we have our um, class defined and uh, we are creating our instance and this is our topic. You know, for our SID Berlin demo topic. And as next step, we just run the program. Take some time. So just waiting five seconds and should come somewhere. Ah. And we send out a message on the channel, to the channel we uh, subscribed. And because we just made a printout, if the response comes back in the on message method, you see uh, over here. That's what we then uh, receive. Not so fantastic till now, because it looks like the program is talking with itself. Yeah. <laughs> but if we go on the next slide, um, I talked about that we need a broker. and. This is our broker that we have uh, in, the, in the internet. So just for quick uh, demos or uh, some prototyping, you can use a Hive MQ on the given link uh, uh, over there. And wrong monitor. So, and you see, we send some message, this hello MQTT world to the broker on the given topic, SID Berlin demo. And we see it also on our broker and also on our, uh, our Hello Berlin as we uh, send a second message. So the communication we saw in our program is not between the program itself. It goes to the uh, internet, uh, uh, send it an MQTT message to the Hive MQ broker. And after that, it gets response back. That's a little bit cooler. So now we have a problem because we can also, um, yep, yeah, send some messages to the topic from uh, from the web uh, UI of the broker, and if we do this, no, ah. then. We see the messages here, but nothing more in our uh, SAP system. So that's a little bit sad. Because the problem is, we started our program. Our program run through one time. We had some 
uh, waiting time in the, in the coding is five seconds. Then the message is needed to run through the internet and then it grabbed the uh, message five seconds later again and uh, wrote it to the cons uh, console, but the program ran once and then it's dead. So cool. Now we should, uh, in the future, if we want to implement an IoT scenario, uh, we need a, a guy on, a, on the system who runs the program <laughs> every several seconds. Very <laughs> fancy. And to solve these problems, we can make a pact with demons. So the problem already described is data only proceeded once. If the program is uh, completed, then the program is completed, and that's not very useful. But the solution is the usage of uh, demons. Has nothing to do with the hell or something like this. <laughs> uh, I think everybody knows what the demon is or uh, who heard of it, who not? Uh, a demon is a background task in uh, a lot of uh, operating systems. Yeah, uh, you also already have as services, uh, for example, on the Windows level or uh, on the Linux or Unix level, they are called mostly demons. Of course, this little guy here is the, uh, the logo of uh, BSD, the BSD daemon. And now the topic, how does it work? this working with demons. <clears throat> there is a base class, CLABAB daemon x base, and uh, this class is SAP, st uh, SAP standard class, and it's not final, as uh, we have with a lot of other classes, <laughs> CL self table, for example. <laughs> and we just uh, need to do some um, implementation of this class. And we already implemented our um, interfaces for an uh, MQTT event handler. And with the inheritance from this class, we also get, uh, impl uh, get some access to the IF ABAP daemon extension methods. So how does it work? We have a start method in our class. With the start me method, we press uh, F9, and the program is running. So F8 is out for the people who are not working. Uh, till now with ADT. In the future, ADT, F9 is the, the new, the cooler one to run the programs in the console. Um, yeah, we have to, to give our daemon a name and, uh, and also a class to, uh, that has to be instantiated. Then we have an unaccept method. Um, there is a check in the SAP where I can implement that uh, a daemon can't be initiated by any class. They have some mechanism to control this. And then the next step, in the on start method, you start your MQTT. And this looks as follows. We have here information uh, about our broker, about our topic, and to find us constants. We have uh, the name of our daemon and the class name which contains our logic. Then we have our class run main method and this method calls a start method. So. And in this start method, uh, we call the CLABAP daemon client manager class with the start method uh, and this method has as a parameter the name of the class we want to create an instance of it. And if we execute this logic, there is an behind the daemon running and he never ends. It's a long running program. So a lot of people know this from their batch jobs, <laughs> but it's not doing anything till he gets a message or an input. It's just on idle mode. So if I run it, and then call the transaction um, SN daemon. There it comes up. So 
so it is here that there are several demons running at several times. Oh, I started some before. Just kill it. Do a refresh. So we see that we have uh, a new demon here running. It's in, in idle mode, and it's waiting for some message to come in. And now I get, uh, go back again to my broker. Say hello. Uh, oh, some typos. And then you see here, ah, it's on the wrong monitor. On this monitor, I get a subsystem message that something has happened in the background. Say, hey, the service is uh, living and it's communicating. From the IMQTT broker, I can push some messages to the topic I subscribe and I can react on them. So, after we created our daemon, or in, during the creation of our daemon, we have to also create an instance of our MQTT client. We have to define the connection on which server or which address we find our um, broker, and we have to connect to them, subscribe to the topics, and then we can wait for our incoming messages and do any stuff. We can call a method, we can, uh, for example, if we have a sensor who is um, measuring the temperature of a machine, and the machine has a too high temperature, it's already burning, <laughs> then we can uh, react on this message. We can create some uh, um, service order that a mechanic or uh, an engineer looks after the machine and do some repair or some other maintenance stuff. But we talk about IoT and where is the thing in the whole scenario? In our uh, scenario, I used, or in um, a scenario, I played around with this uh, thing. It's an uh, EPS 82, uh, ESP8266. It's a little uh, Arduino compatible microcontroller with uh, Wi Fi uh, capable. And in real size, it looks like this. It's a little bit different from the. <laughs> um, it's a very expensive stuff. If you buy it on e uh, eBay, you pay. Two euro fifty? Uh, could be eighty cents. Huh? Eighty cents. Possible. Less than one dollar. Yeah, for yeah, but the normal eBay if you uh, links if you search with it's two euros or seven euros for this stuff. <laughs> yeah, but then I have to pay uh, buy ten thousand. <laughs> Let's give it some power. And there's a one. No? I had before some... So I will do a quick recompilation of the coding. And if you look what has to be done on... I hate demos. If they not work.
So hoping that it works now. So the whole coding, you can see here, that's about 70 lines of code. Um, who is more addicted to it? I'm not the big C or C++, uh, C++ programmer. <coughs> it's very simple. We have to do some includes. First, we, have to, uh, we want to connect our controller with Wi-Fi. Uh, we'll uh, implement a load to first include for it. Then we want to uh, communicate with a pub sub client, also publish and subscribe client. That's the second include we have to create. And then we have just to um, do some uh, entering of SSID and password for the Wi Fi connection. Uh, it's doing something. And we have two standard uh, methods uh, that are um, executed by the uh, chip every second. We have first our initial setup, if it gets power and it uh, switches on. And then we have some very simple loop um, uh, method. And looping for this method, it just sends out, I'm alive since such an, uh, so uh, long seconds, for example. Uh, so just connecting. Ah. I just have to open my uh, Wi-Fi hotspot that it can connect to the internet. Otherwise, it's a little bit useless. Ah. Now it's connected via Wi-Fi, it has the IP address, and it tries to connect to the broker. Reconnecting. It tries every five seconds. It has needs some time till the connection is uh, fixed and established. So, so you're using this public broker provided by HypenQ? Yes. Okay. Just for a simple demo. There are also um, cloud-based solutions of HypenQ that are not public that you have to subscribe, uh, but also cloud-based. You can also install uh, a broker in your uh, local network if you don't want to go to the internet. But just if you say you have an idea and, ah, and then you see the message. Well, I see the message here. Message received, hello Berlin. And the next one, and the next one, and this, uh, this hello Berlin message is the message I, uh, the um, little controller published to the um, topic. So that was it. It's, it starts <laughs> to get annoying. Zip, zip, zip. So in, that's a development environment you, uh, you saw. It's the classical uh, Arduino IDE. So anybody who um, did something with uh, home automation uh, should know this. And also the lines of code, it's a complete coding for the scenario. It's not very uh, high sophisticated. There are also the possibility to integrate some uh, heat sensors or humidity sensors or something else. And then you find a lot of tutorials of documentation uh, on the internet for it. So, 
if you are interested to do also some uh, small tutorial and to build it up, there are a lot of uh, information uh, also delivered by the SAP, for example, um, the get started with ABAP daemons and MQTT and ABAP scenario. It's a little bit more complex. It uses for communicating uh, the ABAP messaging channel and ABAP push channel itself. And for example, if you want to play around more, there's this complete setup for about 30 euros on Amazon, some such uh, Note MCI, uh, MCU IoT programming learning kit and some other information if you don't want uh, to solder, then you also uh, some uh, information how to use so such solderless breadboards or there are also some information with smart home bloggers. And for example, if you want to integrate this whole stuff with some uh, sub UI5 solution, there are also, um, there's also a blog post from Gregor <laughs> about um, uh, push and messaging channel and the integration on the building up of a sub UI5 demo application. And if you want to know more about MQTT, a very simple and lightweight protocol, then you find also here some uh, very good article about. Huh? 30 minutes. <laughs> Any questions? I would think so. Uh, just a Stop moment. Down. Ah, okay. <laughs> the audio is there. So you presented something with IoT, but does it really make sense to push IoT data? Do you have such into an ABAP system, into an ERP system? Um, it depends on the scenario you want to build up. So if I have, for example, device-to-device uh, -device communication, then it's yeah, not needed. But uh, on one hand side, I have, uh, as publisher, the uh, small device. And also the consumer, the subscriber, can also be some um, Arduino or something else. And to the remember that SAP license you not to put data into SAP, but to take data out of Yeah, this is the point. So with, with Leonardo and all this stuff, you have something in between which collects the data and only aggregates go to the ERP where they have some business value. This you, sh you saw how uh, you got a lot yeah, of yeah. messages. Uh, and Leonardo and uh, Sub Edge and all the other big solutions, they are the next level. So this is just some uh, basic evaluation. For example, if you want to do some, uh, some try out of an IoT scenario and uh, you, uh, you have to go to your uh, boss or to your uh, ch uh, chief and you'd say, hey, I need some thousand euros to build up uh, to buy some Leonardo licenses and implement all the stuff in SCP mm. <laughs> could be critical but, but was if this M MQTT client designed for these IOT scenarios or more MQTT for, MQTT for distributed applications and no, MQTT is uh, an IOT protocol it was developed for uh, the stuff and it's uh, from the size a little bit smaller than HTTP and it's also used in the SAP uh, products like Leonardo and uh, Sub Edge. There was also a um, video from, uh, I think it was from Sapphire or TechEd Tech last year, uh, about uh, 50 minutes, uh, the features of um, Sub Edge um, integration with uh, IoT scenarios. And it, it's. Edge, you cannot use the notes and fuse, you need to actually buy some more, uh, more hardware. What? Because this is just a simple hardware. Yeah, that's. Yeah, to use this SAP Leonardo IoT services, you need to have more dedicated hardware, right? Yeah. Raspberry Pis, Arduino, and stuff like that. Actually, yeah. Hmm? Yeah, so it's a telemetry protocol, and not for something else. If you have more complex applications for uh, communication, then you use. O data for sure, or RC, and this MQDT is just for this small devices, and it's a very lightweight protocol with no big overhead, and like for example HTTP, and it's just for small, just for small communication. The integration um, to into an SAP system uh, I showed is for a very simple demo, and to do some first, yeah, hands-on, and. If you uh, establish a complete process reacting on sensor data, then you can, for example, go to your uh, higher levels and get some more money to start a big uh, Sapana SCP project, Leonardo project, or what else.
but actually you triggered me because SFP is putting effort to get it into 1809, and the reason is why. Eh? So I'm also interested in why SFP is putting effort into it because there is this Leonardo platform, there's everything, the clickety-click applications, you know? <laughs> <laughs> I, it's just I know you, but, <laughs> but you understand. I, I share the same, uh, what is the use case? Yeah. It's cool, I, I'm also an ABAP guy, but the use case, maybe ABAP in the cloud is closely related, I don't know. Hmm? Maybe up, up in the cloud because there is basically no UI anymore. There is, I yeah. think, let's For see. Example. Yeah, or they can just uh, react on this uh, sensor data and do some process behind and they say, okay, that could be the, world, uh, the, the new solution. And yeah. if you buy hardware like this with some sensors, then you're about to pay 10 euros for measuring one machine. It's, yeah, you, have, you don't have this complete blown up magic world. Uh, you see in the uh, high class uh, demos of Leonardo's very, very simple way the technology uh, below everybody, uh, everything and just to show this and to get some impression. What's the, what's the magic behind? I mean, I guess your intention was to, to show Toss. how low the barriers are to establish an IT, IoT scenario. Uh, yes. Today. Like you were saying, uh, two euro fifty for a sensor, and <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and it's not about how cool ABAP demons are, or if is it's the right uh, solution to do it with ABAP. Yeah. But in general, it's completely easy, even at your, at your home or yeah, in your it's office, uh, to buy a few sensors and to con connect them to a mosquito or wherever to, to yes. Hive MQ. And, and connect it to some SAP system. Exactly. And it costs like 20, 30, 50 euros, and you're all set then. Exactly. It was the idea to say that uh, all, forget all uh, the IoT products out there. Yeah. <laughs> With this one class, you can implement everything yourself. No, it's just understand the technology, the protocols behind, play around with. For example, build some uh, demo scenarios before you start with the big solutions. Mm -hmm. And you pay uh, 10,000, 100,000 of euros for licenses and hardware and so on. So that's the simple uh, stuff for doing at home. That's a good point. Cool. Thank you, Sören. Welcome. <laughs> you paid your duty.